Welcome to the Highland Astronomical Society's Observatory here at Culloden. You're very welcome. Come and look at the telescope. It's essential that the telescope be absolutely steady. So as you came in, you probably saw that this place is built on a monolithic concrete block. And the mount here is actually part of the telescope. Very, very carefully designed to dampen out any possible vibration of the scope. The scope itself is a 14 inch mead uh, reflector scope. And uh, it looks at a very tiny part of the sky. So you can imagine that any vibration on it literally can shake the image that you're looking at, impossibly, certainly for photography. So that's all part of the whole setup. The secondary scope, which you can see here, is a small refractor. And the reason we've got that is that we can put a CCD camera on it to take an image which the big scope is looking at, the two are aligned exactly together, into the observatory itself for our disabled members to be able to watch in comfort. And this looks at a much wider area of sky than the main telescope. Although they point to exactly the same place, it's much easier to point with this and find the object you're looking for than it is with the main telescope. And uh, we find that this works very well indeed and is giving us good pictures. And our badly disabled member was delighted to be able to follow exactly what the telescope was doing. Eventually, we'll be able to control this telescope, which is computer controlled, from the comfort of our building, actually sitting there and telling the telescope what to look at. And we'll be watching it on the monitor inside the building. We've been in the observatory now, come into the comfort zone. Here we are. Come and have a cup of tea. Well, Arthur and Pat, well, now out from the, the, the cold November wind and isn't this nice, warm, snug area. And this is a good opportunity to ask you both a bit about how this actually happened. How did the society manage to put together such a tremendous place as this? Well, it, it certainly, I mean, team, I suppose, is the answer to this. It, it, it is a very much team effort. First of all, we moved from small beginnings. Uh, I, I, I told you perhaps when we came in, yes. We had then spoken to the uh, National Trust here and they promised us a small part, portion of land way over now where the new building is. And we got a local uh, firm to lay us a concrete block uh, and talking them into it again and uh, we built the, the observatory and that lasted then for I think three or four years yes. and we used it constantly with a smaller scope than we've got at the moment and that really I suppose whetted appetites to move on to something bigger. First step, um, we had to get our committee to redraft our constitution to make it suitable for Oscar, the charity organisation. Yes. And then we had, that was very complicated. <laughs> and then once we did that, we could apply for funds from the that, powers of be. <laughs> that's right, from people like the National Lottery um, and, and from other funding bodies. It required a funding of, of as Pat said, between I think, just between 70 and 80 thousand uh, pounds to build the place. Uh, we did it. And we got a grant from the uh, the lottery for the telescope, uh, which again is another five thousand mm. pounds, um, and and together with a lot of work on our own part. 
you see the finished product. At the end of the day, it's well worth the effort. And as I say, uh, the, the requirement for fun still doesn't stop. We still uh, are buying new equipment, the Lunt telescope and eyepieces. Uh, there's always a requirement for further equipment. A big side of the society is to uh, educate and help schools to become interested in astronomy as part of the science curriculum. And we've got two members, Trina and Pauline, yes. Pauline and Trina, I should say, uh, who go out to schools and give talks. A, a cub meeting cubs, And then they come scouts, here, so groups of cubs and yeah. guides and scouts and, you know, that kind of thing. No, it's <laughs> come here right. in the evenings and are shown around and see the telescope. It, of course, people bring different skills to a society. And as you would find if you started on up in Orkney, someone has knowledge of these things. It may be a teacher, it may be someone in local authority who brings to your attention, ha ha, you must do this, you know, you can't do that without doing this. And uh, that brings you back, oh, all right. And you, you start to do it. But uh, I think uh, if Orkney society comes into being, we wish you all the best, all the, the, the detail and things that we've been through, we can help you with it in, in advice and come down and look at it. And as you said, who knows, we might come up and look at you. Oh, yes. When you're there. <laughs> and that would be good. Uh, because the help between societies, the cooperation between ourselves and Sigma, is advantageous to both societies. Mm -hmm. and, and the uh, Caithness group. And the Caithness yes. group, too. They've been down and uh, perhaps we'll be going up there. So, yes, the more that we can cooperate and combine and perhaps share expertise and facilities, the better. <laughs>